Okay, so section, second section we're going to look at this week is um, still 2.4, but it's um, the second part, which is amplitude and vertical shifts. So yesterday we did phase shifts. Um, and a phase shift, what does that do to the graph? If you look at the original and you look at the new one. Yep, Joe? It moves it from side to side. Yep, and which way is side to side? Like Along the x-axis. Along the x-axis, yep. So it moves it left and right. Well, that's a transformation on the x-axis. Today we're going to look at two transformations on the y-axis. So the first thing we're going to look at is just the definition. What, is, what does amplitude mean? So the amplitude is the height of a sine or a cosine wave. And there's a picture right there. That's the amplitude. So it's the height measured off that center line. And it should always be symmetrical. However high it goes above the center line is also how low it'll go below the center line. And I think we'll get to this later, but amplitude is a height. So what kind of number does height always have to be? Well, it, not the units it could be measured in, the, the type of number. It could be feet, it could be inches. We're just really going to look at it in terms of a number. We're not really going to put a unit on it, but positive. it's got to be positive. Right? There's no such thing as a negative height. Right? That doesn't make sense. We'll talk about what a negative, negatives are going to be involved. But if I ever ask you a question, what is the amplitude of this graph? You would never say a number that like negative something. Okay. Amplitude is always positive. And the way an amplitude change looks, it's a little different. First of all, amplitude change is not adding and subtracting. So it's a different operation. It's multiplying. But you also have to look at where you're multiplying. There's a couple spots you can multiply. You can multiply by a number in front of the x. We're going to look at that tomorrow. This is multiplying by a number in front of the whole thing, like 3 sine x, negative 2 sine x. So I said to you, there's no such thing as a negative amplitude. Well, that negative is going to do something else. That negative is not going to change the height. The 2 is going to change the height. The negative, I'll, I'll show you what that says after. In one half sine x. Okay, ignoring the negative for now, you don't even need to think about the negative. But which one of those graphs, if, or if there's more than one, which, which ones, do you think are going to get taller? They would stretch out and, and get taller than the originals. Christian? Three sine x. Three sine x is going to get taller. Yep. And Anything else? Yeah? Half. Um, no, the half is actually going to compress. The half is going to get squished down. How about the negative 2 cosine x? You think it's going to get taller or it's going to compress? It's going to get taller. Yeah. And the negative is going to do something else to it. So just to show you, here's sine. Here's 3 sine. So how much taller does it get? It's exactly three times as tall. So the original is between one and negative one. And let's just go like this. And three sine x is between three and negative three. So notice at one, that's still the highest point of the graph. Right? On the blue one, it was at one. On the red one, it's at three. So the high points and the low points, they still line up. It's just the highs are even higher and the lows are, are even lower. Okay. Um, if I did like 0.5, okay, just an easier way for me to type in a half. There's the original. 0 0.5, it's only going to go up half as high and half as low. So that one got compressed. Um, let's look at one with a, the negative. So here's cosine x. Do you want to have a thought what the negative is going to do? I think it's going to bring it into the negative side. Bring it into the negative side? All right. Let's look at this. Let's just look at it without the negative. So, Joe? 
Is it gonna reverse it? What do you mean by reverse it? So instead of um so know how right now um the one is positive, would it reverse that one to negative one and then so on and so forth? The one is po so like right here? Like on the yeah. Instead of um no. Know how the Y um, axis yep. is it's one. Oh, like up here? Yeah. Yeah, would that turn into negative one? Yeah. So what's going to happen is if we look at putting a negative in, there's the original. And here's what happens if you put in a negative. So this originally was up here, and now it's down here. So it basically took everything and flipped it. So the two stretched it out twice as big, but then the negative caused it to flip. I wouldn't say that the graph in red has negative amplitude. It still has an amplitude of two. All right, whether I do this, that has an amplitude of two, that has an amplitude of two. It's just the negative causes it to flip over. All right. So if you want to know the amplitude, actually I already did this sweet. Second ago, if you ever want to know the amplitude, you just take the absolute value of the number in front. So the top one has an amplitude of three, second one an amplitude of two, the bottom one amplitude of a half. Doesn't matter if you put a number in there or a negative in there. Last one still has an amplitude of one half. What if I did something like this? What's the amplitude of the last one now? This is still one, still, one still one half. All I did was a phase shift. I took it and I moved it left or right. In that case, I moved it um, left. But moving it left or right has nothing to do with amplitude. Okay. So if, you're, if you've got a problem and they ask you what the amplitude is, focus on the number in front. Absolute value of the number in front. So like the positive and negative, it tells you like where it's gonna hit, where the line is gonna touch it at zero. The x. Um, not always. It depends because if you have sine, well, I think I did it with cosine, but I'll just show you the example with sine. So here's sine. Here's negative sine. So there's actually no change in the amplitude here. Think of this as one sine x, negative one sine x. All that I'm doing is flipping it. So both of these graphs are going to cross the x-axis at zero. They cross in the same spot. So or the y-axis, both axes really. So the question was, does that negative tell you like the number that it crosses the y-axis on? Um, for cosine it would, but not for sine. Sine it always crosses at zero. Okay. Any question on that one? So both of those graphs have the same amplitude. Okay. What's a little tricky about that is if I just showed that picture and I said, how did I get from the red graph to the blue graph? You could say, well, they're out of phase 180 degrees. Right? One of them has been pushed left or right. But we know that's not what I did here. I didn't do a phase shift at all. I made one of them negative and I flipped it. So just by looking at the picture, you can't really tell how I got it. There's multiple ways to get that same picture through phase shifts or what we're learning right now. So since you're taking the absolute value of the number in front, amplitude's always positive. I already said that. So the rule basically has to do with whether the number in front is bigger than one or less than one, the absolute value of it. If you take the absolute value of the number in front and it's bigger than one, it's going to cause the graph to stretch. If you take the absolute value of the number in front and it's less than one, it's going to cause the graph to compress. If the number in front is 1, it doesn't do anything. It keeps the amplitude exactly the same. And if it's a 1, we normally don't even write it. Technically, all the problems you did yesterday, every single one of them had an amplitude of 1. We just didn't write the 1. Okay. 
Okay. And again, this is along the y-axis. Okay, so we, we are changing the y values when we do an amplitude change. Any thought how that would sound if you change the amplitude of a sound? What do you think? How would you perceive that? How would you hear it? Yeah? Would it be higher and lower? Like the pitch? So, so we have a thought higher or lower pitch. Okay. What else could change besides the pitch of it? The duration. Uh, well, duration is just how long I leave it on. It, just when I decide to press the off button. So the duration of it, um, I can control that by pressing on and off. What else could change? Think about like if it was, um, this is a little different, but pretend instead of like a sound wave, it was uh, a radio wave. Right? Radio waves are a little different. You don't see radio waves. You have a device in like your car that picks up the signal out of the air and puts it through a speaker and then you can hear it. But like we don't just hear radio waves just standing here right now. Even though if I had a radio, I would pick up radio signals in this room. We, we can't hear radio waves. Um, but they look something like this, kind of like what we're doing. So if a radio station was broadcasting and the signal looked like that versus the signal looking like that, what do you think the difference would be between those two radio signals? Yeah? Um, the, the, the different channels of like... Wouldn't it be like if you had like 104.5 instead of 107.3, like the 107.3 would be longer? Okay, I see what you're saying. So what would happen in that case when you have different radio frequencies? One of them would be like this. Another one might be like this. The wave would be a little longer or shorter. So in this case, the wave isn't any longer or shorter. It starts at the exact same no, spot, like, ends at the same spot. So, like, if you had two different radio stations, would that be that, or would it be the, how long it is? Well, let's pretend it's the same radio station. Okay. I All right? Know, I didn't know if that was, like, what determined the difference between them. No. So let's say that's the exact same broadcast. If you're listening to it, I'm listening to it, we're hearing the same thing. I'll give you a hint. We're in different places. Maybe we're 30 miles apart, each listening to the same thing. One comes in clearer, the strength of the signal. So one of them has a stronger signal, and maybe somebody 100 miles away, they get something like that. They barely even get the signal, just barely. So it's the strength of the signal. Well, how would that translate to sound? If we were hearing a sound in this room, the strength of the sound would be how? How loud you hear it? How loud you hear it, yeah. So when we're dealing with sound waves, you make something have a higher amplitude, it gets louder. If you compress it, it gets softer. So it's not, um, it's not super interesting, but I can play it. All right, so there's, our sound wave. What I'm going to do is just lock the left and right together so that way I can change the um, amplitude of both speakers at the same time. So there's, let's give it a second. There's our sound. And watch what happens as I start to drag the volume. So you can hear what happens. The, the wave. Basically, the sound goes away, and the wave now is, it's almost flat. It's not even a wave. And that's because I've dragged the volume all the way down to zero. Okay, so now we, we can't hear it. And then if I start, start to drag it back again, as I, as, I, as I drag the volume louder, the wave, the amplitude gets higher, and it gets louder. So there's really a couple different kinds of waves. The kind of wave that you're hearing, that's a sound wave. That's called a compression wave. The way it works is it is air. Air vibrates from the speaker, vibrates and hits your ear, you hear it. There's other kinds of waves too, like 
light or radio or microwave. Those are also waves, but they're very different. X-rays, okay, those, those are waves. Um, we're not really, I'm not really talking about those kind of waves, but there's, there's many other kinds of waves you can talk about. But sound is easy for me to demonstrate in here. I don't really have machines to generate radio waves, ultraviolet, x-rays. I can't really do that in here. So. And sound is less harmful. So if I started generating x-rays, that probably wouldn't be good. Um, well, sound can be harmful. It depends how loud and what, what frequency it's at. Um, probably not as harmful as x-rays. So the amplitude change for a sound wave, or even for an electromagnetic wave, which is the other stuff we're not talking about, it affects the strength of the wave. What does strength mean? Depends. If it's a sound you can hear, strength means louder. If it's like an x-ray, there's no such thing as a louder x-ray. That doesn't make sense. It's a stronger x-ray, right? It could, it could maybe, if you had like a sheet of lead, it could a strong enough x-ray might be able to go right through it um, or something even more powerful than an x-ray, right? But for us, we want to think the volume. All right, so how do we find the, the five important points on our graph for an amplitude change? Well, the first thing is the x's stay the same, right? And that's great when the x's stay the same because those are the ones that have all the fractions with pi. So every single x value for tonight's homework is going to be 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. Every single problem. Here are the original x's from our, from our table. So you're just copying down the original x's. So now the y's are going to change. How do we find the y's? All we have to do is multiply the old y values by a. And if I go back to the previous slide for a second, just remember what a is. a is right here. a is the number in front. Notice I didn't write absolute value of a. Because if there's a negative in there, that negative is going to cause the graph to look different. It's going to flip it. So to find the new y values, you multiply the old y values by whatever the number is in front. If it's positive, use it as a positive. If it's negative, use it as a negative. The only time you get rid of the negative is if I ask you the question. What is the amplitude? Don't ever tell me that you have negative height. That doesn't make sense. But the negative does affect the picture. Okay. So a lot easier arithmetic-wise, because when you're talking about the, the old y values, they're 1, zeros, and negative 1s. So all you're going to have to do is multiply a 1, a 0, or a negative 1 by a number. No common denominators, nothing like that for today. Any questions on that? So let's look at an example um, of an amplitude change. All right, so first thing, if that was on the test and we weren't learning it right now, how would you know that it's an amplitude change? How do you know it's that? Why, you know, why isn't it a phase shift? Why isn't it? other stuff we're going to learn. Joe? Because it's in front of the sign or cosine? It's in front, and what operation is it? Oh, multiplication. Multiplication. It's multiplication, and it's in front. Very different than this. We're going to look at that tomorrow. That's multiplication in front of the x, not in front of the whole thing. That's a period change. So, do that tomorrow. Okay, but this is multiplication by a number in front. It's an amplitude change. For an amplitude change, what column here stays the same? My x's or my y's? Yep, x's. So we can copy them down from the original table. What did I say the x's are for every problem? 
today. Yeah. Christian? Zero, one, zero, negative uh, The first one is zero, but those are those sound more like y values. Is it like pi? Uh, that's in there. Pi over two. Pi over two. First pi over two. Two pi. And two pi. Those are your x's. Now, I'm going to put my original y values just outside the table, and I'm going to do my arithmetic just like I did before. What are my y values for cosine? One, zero, one, zero. Yes. I think the ones Christian mentioned earlier, those are y values, but they were for sine. So if you accidentally do sine, you might still get the x's right, but then you get all the y's wrong, and then the graph would be wrong too. All right. So 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. And what are we going to multiply them all by? 3. So we get 3, 0, negative 3, 0, 3. That's it. That's the table. Now we just made a graph. Questions on the table? Okay, so let's make our sketch. So I've got my axes set up here. I don't need to worry about negatives on the x. In fact, you're never going to have to worry about negatives on the x today because we're not shifting it left or right. So it's always going to be in the, the positives. Pi over 2, pi. 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. Now, on my y-axis, I can scale it any way I want. I would make each tick mark worth 3. So. This is 0, this is 3, that's negative 3. If you want to go by 1s, you, you could do that too. But I usually just scale it like that. All right. So now we've got 3, 0, negative 3, 0, 3. So 3, 0, negative 3, 0, back to 3. Oops, wait, that did those a little off. Yeah. 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 They should all. Three, zero, negative three, zero. It's hard to see when I'm at the board. Three. I'm looking at it from the side. It's, it's weird. Right. And that should still be okay like that. Pretty close. All right, so there's, there's our sketch. Any questions on that? All right, so a lot of the sketches we do today are going to look the same because I'm going to change my scale. If you ask me to do the problem 5 cosine x, I could draw the exact same picture and just go like this. 5 negative 5. Now that's a graph of 5 cosine x because I changed my scale. It's going up to 5, down to negative 5. If you wanted 10 cosine x, 10, negative 10. So just by changing the scale, you can kind of reuse the same picture over and over. Any questions on that, that idea? So if you're wondering why a lot of my graphs are going to look the same now today, this is why. I'm going to just change the scale. I'm just trying to put it back to what it was. There you go. So that's that one. Yeah? So if you had a negative, wouldn't you reverse that scale? Oh, like the, not the scale, the graph itself? The graph itself, yep. If you had a negative in front of this whole thing, it would look something like this. That's what I think yep. We just take the whole graph and flip it. And we're going to do one with a negative in a, in a minute. Okay, let's try this one. Uh, one half sine x. All right, so we know it's an amplitude change because we're multiplying by a number in front. Is this going to make the graph taller or is it going to compress it? Compressive. How do we know it's going to compress? It's half, right? You've got a number in front that's less than one. Okay. 
So my x values stay the same? Yep. Will it ever be shown as sine x over 2? Um, no, but you could. I mean, that is the same thing. It's kind of like saying 3 divided by 2 versus 1 half of 3. 3 times a half, 3 divided by 2, same thing. But yeah, um, we don't ever write it this way, but you definitely could. Okay. Um, so 0, pi over 2, pi, pi over 2, 2 pi. Okay. What are my y values, the original y values for sine? 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. All right. And what are we going to multiply all those by? A half. All right. So when I do that, um, what do I get from my new y values? Zero. Yep, zero. Point five. Yep, 0. 0.5. You can just leave it as a half. It doesn't matter. Negative 0.5. Zero. 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 Yep. So there's your, there's your y values. Okay, so let's set up our, our graph. So label the x-axis, okay, just like you always do. All right, 2 pi, pi over 2, 2 pi. And this time, I'm going to let my tick marks each be a half. If you don't want to do it that way, you could put another one in here. And you could call that 1 a negative 1. I, I guess I can do it that way. It doesn't matter. And then I just put in other ones to represent one half, negative half. Okay. So zero, half, zero, negative a half, zero. Zero, half, zero, negative a half, zero. You did it to a whole set of half. I did it to, oh, wait here, thank you. Yeah, what I should do is I should do something like, I should put in like a, like a line there so I can kind of see it. On yours, I think I put dots, so that way you don't have lines all over the place, but let's put in a line there. So zero, half, zero, negative a half, back to zero. There we go. That's good. Yep, thank you. Any questions on it? Okay, so that's an amplitude change. This would be a quieter sound because it got um, compressed. Okay, this one. Okay, what's uh, what's the amplitude of that one? one. If, I, if I asked you that question. One. one. So this technically isn't really an amplitude change. But we're still multiplying by a number in front. Even though it's not changing the amplitude, what is the negative one going to do? Yep, yeah, so if you had to kind of say that in one word, it's going to change the negatives to positives and the positives to negative. You could say the graph is going to flip. Okay, it's going to flip. Or you could say reflect. All right. So our x's stay the same. And all my original y's, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, they're all going to get reversed. They're all going to get multiplied by negative 1. They're all times negative 1. So negative 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1. So now, instead of my graph being kind of like an N shape, right, that, that's how it actually, yeah, normal, it actually looks more like a U shape. That's usually the section of the cosine wave we draw. It's going to flip over, and it's going to look more like a like an end shape, more like a hill kind of shape. Right. So since I'm not changing the amplitude, I'm just going to go with 1 and negative 1. Pi over 2, pi, three pi over 2, 2 pi. Okay, so negative 1, 0, 1. 1, 0, 1, and now we come back down. 0, negative 1. Okay, 
just try to make it, again, make it look curved. Um, it shouldn't, shouldn't look like a point or anything like that. And it would continue on, I don't know if you're going to keep going. Okay, any question on that So why don't we use the reciprocal one or other reciprocal or the absolute value? Really? Because when you're when you're actually graphing, you just multiply by whatever the number is in front. Because the negative affects the picture. Because the negative causes a flip. The only time you don't use the negative is if I ask you the question, what is the amplitude? Okay, if I ask you the question, what's the amplitude? I don't tell me the amplitude is negative because that would mean like saying the table is negative five feet long. Right? There's no such thing as a negative length. Right? So that's the only time. And you will have some questions on the test where I just give you something like this. I don't even say to graph it, and I just say, what is the amplitude? And I might give you choices of like one half, pi, one, negative a half. Okay, those might be the choices I give you. Yeah. So it doesn't, so no matter what, even if you have a negative in front, it's going to stay the same amplitude? Amplitude? Yeah, the negative has no effect on the height of the graph. No. No effect at all. Same height. That's not really something I can demonstrate with sound. There's, there's no way that I can really take the graph and flip it. I can't really do that. I also can't do the last transformation we're going to look at, which is a vertical shift. Basically moves the sound wave up and down. Not stretching it up and down, kind of like, well, exactly like this. Sine x plus 2. So there's your, there's your original. And there's a shift up 2, not a stretch. It just shifted it up to. There's no real connection that I know of with sound to this. So this is one I, I can't play for you. So based on what I just graphed, you might have seen what it, what it looks like. It's when you add or subtract a number at the end. That's very different than adding or subtracting a number inside the parentheses. Those are all examples of vertical shifts. If you want it to be a phase shift, you have to do all your work inside the parentheses. X plus or minus inside. So that's a vertical shift. What if I did this? It's the same thing. What I did there made no difference at all. all right? What if I... What if I did this? That's the same thing. I just got extra parentheses there. It doesn't mean anything. What if I did this? That's a phase shift now. Now you're shifting the graph two units to the left. Two units left. That's two units. Well, you tell me, which way do you think that would move? Two units? Right. Well, that's phase shift. That's phase shift. Up. 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 And then minus 3. Which way would minus 3 go? Yeah. You would think it would go down. And this transformation does what you would expect. Okay. Up is positive. Down is negative. It's not the opposite. Okay. With phase shift it was. This one's not. So the function moves up if you add. Down if you subtract. All of the transformations on the y-axis do exactly what you would expect. Positive numbers shift up, negative numbers move down. Multiply by a big number in front, the graph stretches bigger. Put a fraction or put a small number in front, the graph gets smaller. Okay? Everything on the y-axis is exactly what you see is what you should do. On the x-axis, it's all the opposite. Okay? So with phase shift, you have to do the opposite. With period change, kind of the same thing. You're going to have to do the opposite. But we'll look at period change tomorrow. Yeah. Okay.
Okay, so if we're shifting up and down, which values are unaffected? They don't change at all. Yeah? The x's. So when we're trying to find where those five points in the original table go, the x's stay the same. So copy them down. What are those original x's? Hopefully, you're starting to know those by now. Yep, so those are all your x's. For every problem you do in the homework, for every problem on the test that's about a vertical shift, those x's never change. So it's going to be the y's that change. Well, it's not really that bad. All you have to do is take the old y's, or the original y's, and you're going to add or subtract d. What's d? Well, if I go back for one second, d is right there. So whatever you see, that's what you do. If you see a plus 2, you're going to plus 2 to all the y's. If you see a minus 5, you're going to minus 5. And I can write this, but sometimes it doesn't help. Don't do the opposite. With a phase shift, you do. With a vertical shift, you don't. If you do, then it's wrong. So don't do the opposite. Okay, so find the new y's, add or subtract whatever that you see in the problem to all the original y's. So all you're going to be doing is adding or subtracting a number to a 1, a 0, or a negative 1. Okay, so let's graph this one. y equals sine x plus 2. Actually, I think I already did it on the calculator. So, yeah. So I already kind of know what, what to expect, but let's just do it. Okay. How do I know that that's a vertical shift? Why not a phase shift? Why not an amplitude change? Tomorrow I'll ask, why not a period change? But why is it a vertical shift? Because it's plus two on the end. Because it's plus two, it's on the end, it's outside of parentheses. Okay, there are no parentheses around that letter and the number. Okay, so it's a vertical shift. Keep the x's the same. X's only change in horizontal shifts. This is not a horizontal shift. Okay, so, um, well, Oscar, for my y values, what are the original ones for sign? Zero. Yep. One. Zero. Negative. Zero. Yep. So those are my originals. Okay, now, E-frame, what am I going to do to all those y values? So multiply, we did that with amplitude change. We don't multiply with this one because the problem doesn't have multiplication in it. What, what operation do we have in this problem? Addition. addition. So we're going to do addition. What are we going to add to each y value? Two. two. No, we're going to add two. Add two, add two. Just taking all the y values and shifting them up two units. So I get two, three, two, one, two. That's it. There's your table. So arithmetic, I think, is much easier than what we had yesterday. Questions on that? Okay, so now when we graph it, um, label your x's. This time on my y's, I have to go from 1 to 3. Okay, so I would go, I think that, that'll be perfect. Okay, and we're at 2, 3, 2, 1, 2. So we have 2, 3, 2, one, back to two. And there's your sketch. And that's what 
we had right there. Of course, they're showing it, um, you know, going on forever. We're just showing one section. If you wanted another section, just copy and paste what you have there right onto the end. And there's another section. Okay, what's, um, what's the amplitude of that graph? One. Yes. Sometimes people say three. Well, if you put in that center line, remember the amplitude is the height off the center line. So if you look at it, it goes above the center line one, goes below the center line one. That's an amplitude of one. Also, if you look at it, look at the number that's in front, one. Plus two changes how high it goes. If I asked you what is the maximum value, that's three. Yep. Maximum value is three. Amplitude is one. Okay. Minimum value is also one in this case. Question on that? All right, so that was a uh, sine shifted up. We'll finish up with a um, cosine shifted down. Okay, so again, I've got parentheses. Does that mean, oh, wait a minute, is that a phase shift now with the parentheses? No. Why not? I thought when I put parentheses in, it meant phase shift. It's not around the x and the minus 5. It's not around the x and the minus 5. You, if you do it like this, it's a phase shift. If you do it like that, it's a vertical shift. Okay, so cosine of x minus 5. When you put parentheses in, you're changing the order of operations. That's why it changes the type of transformation. Okay, um, so for this one, um, Dylan, what stays the same? Right, so yep, can you go ahead and tell me them? Zero, pi over two, pi over two, pi over two, pi. So there's my x's. So you get five points for the x's. Now five points for the y's. Two points for the sketch. All right. Um, original y values for cosine. About um, Savannah? Would that be the, it starts with the 1? Yep. And then, I think it's 0, mm -hmm. and then negative 1, and then 1. Well, it goes from 1, if you think of it here, so it's I'm 1. I'm trying to think of it because it's the u one. Negative 1. Where do we go after negative 1, before we get to 1? 0. Back to 0. Oh. And then to 1. All right, so now I'm going to take all those values and minus 5. Okay, so what are my new, uh, new y values? Yep, Scott? Negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 5, negative 6. Yep. So there's your table. Five points for the y's. Now we'll make our sketch. Um, this time, my sketch is entirely in quadrant four, right? Because it's on the negative part of the y-axis, positive x-axis. That's why I set up my graph paper like that. So I'm going to put my labels above this time. You could put them below it. It doesn't matter. And on my y-axis, I'll go by ones. I need this a little smaller. Let's go like this. All right, so we've got 0, negative 4, pi over 2, negative 5, um, pi, we're at negative 6, back to negative 5, back to negative 4. And there's your sketch. So it's cosine shifted down. Five units. What's the amplitude of that? The amplitude is still one. You didn't change the amplitude. The lowest value it ever hits is negative six. The highest value is negative four. It doesn't get any higher than negative four. Okay, so any questions on the on the vertical shifts? Okay, so we've done three out of four of the, the transformations you'll see on the test. 
Um, it will probably be about six graphs on the test. So one for each transformation. A couple of them I'll, I'll double up. So you have two for a couple. Um, and then the last questions will be multiple choice. Two of them are going to be just like the original questions I gave you right here. And I said, what's the amplitude? So I'll give you two graph, two equations, and all you have to do is write a number. The last two questions are going to say, what's the period? So I'm going to give you two equations just like that and ask you the period. That part you don't have to do yet. That'll be tomorrow. Okay, so homework um, tonight is worksheet, just like last night. So I'll give you that. Um, we'll go over it. I'll be after school tomorrow for extra help. If there's anything you need to come in, make up, uh, I'll be here.